We are now in the second quarter of the year. Happy Q2, happy new month and happy spring. Well, depending on where you live. In the theme of new beginnings, I'll be sharing with you what I would do if I were to start again as a UX designer. Hi, my name is Chili, and I have been designing professionally for 12 years. Yeah, that is a very long time. It's giving old. I started as a graphic designer and made the transition into UX in 2016. This was not an easy transition. There were hardly any resources. I remember there was one popular expensive bootcamp, a few blogs, textbooks, nothing like you have today. I remember one of these textbooks got so expensive on Amazon, even though it retailed at 23 pounds, it was selling for close to a thousand pounds which would have been a big risk because I had no idea if it had quality information or not. Luckily, one of my friend's brothers bootlegged a digital copy from his university. Maybe I shouldn't say that on the internet. Nowadays, you have the opposite problem. There are way too many resources, which can also be a problem because which one do you choose? There are a lot of courses ranging from free all into the thousands of dollars. There are hundreds of YouTube channels, mine included, and some even telling you you can be a designer within three months with no experience. So which path is the right path? This is what I would do. The first thing I would do is to start learning Figma. Get straight into there and start practicing. You don't need to do an extensive course, just the basics. I have a beginner's Figma tutorial that I will link below. The best way to learn is by recreating existing products. Take a screenshot of your favorite product, whether it's an app on your phone or a website, and put it onto Figma and try to recreate it. You can start by creating wireframes and then move on to detailed designs. This will help you to start to understand the small details that make up a polished design. It will train your eyes to be aware of spacing, color combinations, and typography. Next, I would start practicing UI. Now that you know how to use Figma, use daily UI prompts to get you thinking creatively and coming up with your own design ideas. Daily UI is a design challenge that sends you prompts every day where you come up with your own designs. You can also use ChatGPT to create your own UI prompts tailored to your own interests. There are a few websites that you can use for inspiration. It's good to look at other people's designs for creativity and also for best practices. It's also good practice to share your designs online to get feedback. A lot of designers share their designs on Twitter to get feedback from their peers. You can also use the daily UI hashtag to see what others are designing and also to join in the conversation. Next, it's good to master UI principles. At this point, you've probably got the hang of Figma and coming up with new designs, but you probably feel like your designs are not looking as polished and professional as you hope them to be. That's because you're not adhering to the four UI principles that professional designers use to make their work look polished. Grid, color, typography, and layout. By applying these principles to your designs, it will make your work go from amateur to professional. I have a full length video that goes into detail on UI principles, which I will link below. As a beginner, being good at UI will be the key to you getting a role. I studied graphic design at university, and I believe this allowed me to easily transition from graphic design to UX because I had the ability to make designs look good. Next, I would take a UX course. There are so many different courses out there, it can be confusing to choose the right one. I feel like the course by Google is inexpensive and provides good value. It's not the most extensive course and it's tailored to Google's visual language, which isn't used widely by the industry, but it teaches really good fundamentals and it's great for the price. More expensive course doesn't really mean it's better. Someone like me can tell by looking at a course if it's worth the price, but a beginner wouldn't have that knowledge. Generally, you don't really need to spend more than $3,000 for a good course but the value some expensive courses provide is the ability to get feedback on your work. It's a good idea to invest in coaching sessions if your course doesn't provide feedback. I'll be launching coaching sessions in the near future, so sign up to my mailing list so you're notified. I also recommend these two books, The Design of Everyday Things, which is a UX classic, and Don't Make Me Think by Steve Krug. The NN Group website is also a good resource that I still use all the time. Continuously learning is the key to becoming a great designer. Next, I would create personal projects. Now that you have your UX knowledge and your UI knowledge, it's time to start building projects and showing off your knowledge. But before diving headfirst into a project, it's important to understand how a project should be structured. I have a case study template and a video to walk you through it. So how do you decide what project to do? The easiest way to do this is by creating a new feature for an existing product. This could be an app that you use or a website that you feel could improve the user experience. For example, if you're based in London, the TFL Go app is used for accurate bus times, but it can be so difficult to find a specific bus due to its layout. 
So the project could be, how can you make it easier to find specific buses? And by taking into account the fact that people use the same buses often, is there a way to favor commonly used bus routes? If you're based in London, you're welcome to use that as a personal project. Unfortunately for everyone else, this app only works for the London location. But when you are creating your project, make sure you're focusing on creating impact with your designs. How will your designs help to improve the user experience? How will this lead to the company making more money or save time or increase subscription? Whatever the impact is, make sure that your new designs are not just about making it look better. You can also find local businesses whose websites need improving. This can then be turned into a live project if you approach them with this new design idea. But because you need the engineer to make sure the new designs get implemented, you don't have to wait until the designs are live to put them into your portfolio. You can use the results from user testing to outline the impact your new designs have created. Next, I would create a portfolio. Creating a portfolio can feel overwhelming. It is a big task. There are a few things you can do to make it easier. First one is by using pre-made templates. You can get these on platforms such as Framer, Webflow, Squarespace, or many other website platforms. There is no need to reinvent the wheel. Just search through the templates, find one that you like and apply it. You can then edit it and amend it to your own design taste. And it's okay to use the free version with the platform's URL. Use my case study template to help you outline a comprehensive case study. I also have a video where I show you my process of updating my portfolio and how I use this template. I will link that below. So those are the steps I would take to become a UX designer if I was to start over today. So here are some final tips on your learning journey. Take your time. I have seen people rush through courses to obtain the certificate within a few weeks. The certificate will not get you a job. It is a high quality portfolio that will and a high quality portfolio takes time. I understand the pressure to learn quick as the competition is high. However, the best thing you can do for yourself is to ensure that your portfolio stands out due to its high quality. There are a lot of videos on the internet about being a designer within a few weeks or a few months, and a lot of them are just not realistic unless you already come from a design or a tech background. If you're watching these videos for a quick hack, you will find it very hard. Another good tip to help you stand out when you're looking for jobs is to learn design systems. When I'm looking at the job market, there is a high demand for designers who are good at design systems. You can find a lot of resources on the Figma community and there are a lot of good design system courses to upgrade your skills. And that is it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please help me out by pressing the like button and subscribing to my channel. And let me know in the comments where you are in your learning journey and what topics I should cover to help you along. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.